Hello, everyone. My name is Fernando Lisboa. And I am Shivam Burma. We are undergraduate students at Carnegie Mellon University, as well as researchers at SpaceML. We want to start off by thanking everyone for coming and saying that we hope everyone is staying safe and enjoying the conference so far. As we are all supposedly in Australia right now, Shivam, what has been one of the most prominent natural disasters occurring here in recent years? Along with the worldwide pandemic, there have been devastating wildfires in Australia. Many wildfires have also recently been burning close to home for me in California as well. Motivated by recent wildfires across the world and our interest in computer science, we wondered if we could create a program to detect wildfires around the world using satellite imagery. We began to explore the fields of remote sensing and machine learning and decided that we needed to build some sort of classifier. In order to do this, we would first need access to satellite data to be able to train a machine learning model. Well, we did not have any sort of data set containing images of wildfires, we were lucky enough to gain access to a hurricanes data set prepared by NASA Impact, containing 13,118 images of hurricanes. So, we were set on first creating a hurricanes classifier to gain exposure to the world of remote sensing and AI. In our mission of creating the hurricanes classifier, we came to a key realization. The most important step of building a model is making sure that one has access to good data with which to train the model. Easy access to consumable satellite imagery to train machine learning models is non-trivial to obtain for a beginner. We seek to promote citizen scientists' engagement in the field of remote sensing and machine learning by building a pipeline which significantly simplifies the process of both acquiring and pre-processing data for training machine learning models. We also desire the training process to be both fast and easy. Thus, professional scientists and beginners alike can take advantage of our product to efficiently access data and train models. What we found in our initial exploration of training a model on satellite data is that the steps to getting the desired data are shrouded by technical terminology and require substantial knowledge in both remote sensing and data science. These barriers to entry make it hard for citizen scientists and beginners to get engaged in the field. For example, although we already had a Hurricanes dataset prepared by NASA Impact, the steps to pre-process the data so that we could train a model were quite tedious. We first had to get the zip file URL, download four gigabytes, unzip it, read through the file names to understand the naming convention. Then we had to write a parser to get the speed from the image name. We also had to write a script to clean some noisy images from the data set. Then, since TensorFlow Keras accepts data in a specific format and the helper functions for loading the data were not usable, we had to write our own image and label loader. And finally, after that, we got to train. And when we finally got the chance to train, it was slow. Pretty darn slow. No, that we had to go through all these steps after the data set had already been created. So we looked for a way to drastically simplify the process. Our aim is to facilitate first data acquisition and second high performance training of machine learning models using TensorFlow datasets, sets of prepackaged datasets that are ready to be used in efficient TensorFlow deep learning pipelines with few lines of code. We decided to turn the Hurricanes dataset provided to us by NASA Impact into a TensorFlow dataset and compare its usage with the original data. The beauty of TensorFlow datasets is that we can have everything ready to go in a training pipeline with one call to the function, tfds.load. And even better, TensorFlow datasets are the optimal format for training. Without TensorFlow datasets, getting the training pipeline to run for the very first time took us multiple days as we had to go through the many hurdles previously outlined. We did not want people who are new to the field of remote sensing and machine learning to be deterred from exploring these fields as a result of the long data preparation process. With the TensorFlow dataset, it's nearly instantaneous to get the data ready to be trained. All the dirty work is done behind the scenes and the user has to only run two lines of code to prepare a high performance machine learning pipeline. In addition to making the data acquisition and pre-processing significantly easier, TensorFlow datasets also allows for an increase in performance. When training the Hurricanes classifier with the original dataset, it took about 340 seconds per epoch. However, with this new pipeline utilizing TensorFlow datasets, training took about five seconds per epoch, which is about 68 times faster. Now, making tiny changes to the training images called augmentations is essential for making a robust classifier. 
and that slows things down. It took 450 se 415 seconds per epoch with normal keras augmentation. With our prepackaged data set, it took about five seconds per epoch, which is also about 83 times faster. <clears throat> but let's look at how this speedup was achieved. First, we parse the data and sort it in efficient TF records format. The TF record is a binary file storage format, which quickens the time that it takes to train the data because it compresses the data in a manner that takes less space on the disk and is read more efficiently from the disk. Second, we realized that too many small files and kilobytes can have a lot of overhead and seek time. Similarly, large files and gigabytes can reduce opportunities to parallelize data processing. So we combined several files in the sweet spot, about one to 200 megabyte TF record files. Now that the data is ready, we encapsulated it all as a TensorFlow data set. Normally, while the CPU does data processing to get it ready for the GPU, the GPU waits idle. Then when the GPU trains, the CPU sits idle. This interdependence leads to a big source of resource wastage. Since our data set is in the TF.data land, we get the opportunity to do prefetching, which essentially passes data between the CPU and GPU asynchronously and reduces waiting by a large amount. <clears throat> This also allows us to do caching, which loads and stores the data set in memory, saving the time that it takes to open files and read data. This is what allows all epochs after the first to be very fast. And lastly, normal augmentations in Keras are done on the CPU. Your CPU has eight or 10 cores, whereas the GPU might have 5,000. So we utilize the GPU accelerated version of those augmentations, including rotation, brightness, cropping, zooming, and shearing which also leads to a huge speed up. And that's why it's more efficient. To be clear, all these tools were already readily available as a part of TensorFlow. We just joined them together. We have made the training pipeline both fast and easy. So the point is with pre-packaged and publicly available TensorFlow datasets, we have the opportunity to simply access efficient training pipelines and get more people excited about investigating what is possible. For experienced scientists, we want to save your time, get you more productive. And thanks to amazing help from the NASA IMPACT team, we are currently not far away from packaging multiple NASA IMPACT datasets, such as hurricanes, dust storms, smokes, and clouds, all as TensorFlow datasets. The benefit of packaging these datasets is twofold. Firstly, anyone new to the fields of remote sensing and machine learning will be able to easily train hurricane classifiers while avoiding the hurdles involved in getting the data in the first place. Secondly, with standardized train and test data sets, scientists can compare and publish accuracy metrics on the same test data set. Having the prepackaged data sets is great for anyone looking to quickly train a model on a specific predetermined phenomenon. For users looking to gather their own data for a specific location around the world and a specific range of dates, we also look for ways to simplify the entire downloading process. Currently, there are several resources such as USGS Earth Explorer, which grant public access to decades worth of satellite imagery. However, the process of acquiring the desired data from these resources is not so beginner friendly. Naming conventions, abbreviations, and an abundance of customizability options work to create an overwhelming user experience for a beginner citizen scientist looking to get in the field of remote sensing and machine learning. Moreover, the data gathered from these resources unfortunately are not returned in a machine learning friendly format. The images will have to be manually tiled into grids by the user and personalized image and label loaders would have to be written to train the data. And like with our prepackaged hurricanes data set, training from images in a folder will result in slow training times. We thus developed a command line tool that takes two required parameters, coordinates for a rectangular region of the world and a range of dates. This downloads data of the selected region for each day in the range of dates. The tool automatically uses NASA's Global Imagery Browse Services API as well as the Geospatial Data Abstraction Library to download a GeoTIFF file of the specified region for each date. Then, users also have the option to pass in several optional parameters for further customization. Users can decide to tile the GeoTIFF file into smaller JPEGs, providing also the width, height, and overlap for each tile. Furthermore, users also have the ability to select if they want to generate TF records from the set of tiles, which also stores the coordinates of each tile. 
Note that the TensorFlow data sets are essentially a wrapper around TF records. And so outputting the downloaded data as a TF record offers the same performance benefits as the TensorFlow data sets. In summary, the downloader enables data acquisition to be flexible yet simple, utilizing parameters for customizability. As for training the acquired data, the downloader converts the data to TF record and thus TensorFlow datasets format, which is optimized for training with TensorFlow, an open source framework. Finally, our work is open access and the downloader is available on GitHub for anyone to use. Thus, our streamlined command line tool impacts the three major parts of an AI pipeline and provides a fast and easy method for developing machine learning models trained on satellite imagery. Let's see how we can use our data downloader to obtain a small data set of the wildfires in California. So the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is visit the GitHub repository and view the readme for instructions on how to download and install this package. And once everything is installed and ready to go, the one command that you're gonna need is GDL. And then GDL takes several arguments and uh, additional parameters. And we're gonna go through that right now in order to download satellite imagery for the months of September through October of the California Bay Area, which experienced some wildfires. And you can see them very clearly um, from these dates. So the first argument that you're gonna pass in is the start date that you wanna download from. So for us, that's gonna be September, uh, let's start September 15th. And then the end date is gonna be October 5th. So 2020-10-05. Then after you pass in this range of dates, you have to uh, enter the coordinates of the top left and bottom right um, corners of your desired rectangular region that you're going to want to download. And you can find these coordinates using Google Maps. It's just latitude, longitude. Um, so for the top left of our desired region, I have them copied here. And then for the bottom right coordinate, we have this. And if we enter just this command, what the downloader is gonna do is it's gonna go through and download one large GeoTIFF file of this specified region for each day in this range of dates. Um, but sometimes users want more sort of functionality from the, func from the tool, right? So instead of just taking one large image, we have the option of also tiling images. So that would take one large image and create several smaller images. And so that is with the tiling parameter, which we can set to true. And then when we do that, we also have the option to set the tile width and tile height of images. By default, those values are set to 512 pixels, but we can set them to whatever we want. So let's say that we want tile width to be 224 and tile height also to be 224. So once we have the tile width and tile height, we can also specify the tile overlap, which is sort of the amount that each tile overlaps the next one they're generating so that each image contains some portion of another image within it. So by default, this value is also set to 0 0.5. So about half of each image is in the next. Um, but for our purposes, we can set the tile overlap to zero. So once we have all these parameters for tiling, we also have the option of generating TF records from these tiles. And TF records are a very optimized, efficient format for training machine learning pipelines with TensorFlow. Um, and when, when creating these TF records, sort of some of the metadata that goes through is the coordinates also of the top left and bottom right corners of each tile, right? So we can specify um, generate TF records equals true. And then when we run this, we'll give it a second. And it starts downloading the, the region for, for each date. So everything's been downloaded. And if we go here into this directory demo, we'll see that this directory and its subdirectories were automatically generated. And if we just took a look at the name right now, MODIS is for the satellite product that we're downloading, which is the MODIS Terra uh, Reflectance Color Corrected um, from the NASA Gibbs API. And here we also have the 
coordinates of the top left corner of the region that we downloaded just as a unique identifier for each time you want to call this function. So this is rounded to two decimal digits. And then here we also have the range of dates that we downloaded. So 2020 0915 to 2020 1005. So then if we go in here, we'll see that we have three um, subdirectories. So we have the original images that were downloaded, the TF records and the tiled images. So let's take a look first at the original images. Uh, as we can see here, we downloaded 21 days of that, spe that specific region. Um, and they are also GeoTIFF files, but we can also, we can open up and view them. So this would be the 15th. You can see some wildfires around here and also a lot of smoke in, in the air, some wildfires here. We'll just take a look at a couple, couple more of these days that were downloaded. Here we have the 24th. This is the 27th. This is a nice clear image. You can see a lot of wildfires around. And then if we go and open the 29th, you're able to see a lot of, a lot of smoke. Still some wildfires around here, down here, up here. So these are the original images that we downloaded, but also we specified it so that it would tile the images in case we wanted smaller um, tiles of each image. So if we click on tiled images, there is another subdirectory which specifies the size of each image and the overlap. So we had told the tile width and height to be 224 and the overlap we set to zero. So if we open this, we see that we generated 1,029 tiles from those 21 original days. And so these tiles are very small, but if we open some, here it was, must have just been a lot of smoke. But then here we have all the about 1,029 tiles. As well as the tiles, we told it to generate the TF records. So if we go into here, we also specify by the tile size and tile, um, by the tile size and tile overlap. And then here we have a modus TF record file, which can be used to train. Um, note that this is only 5.9 megabytes, but had this reached above 100 megabytes, then these files would um, turn into shards where each one would be around 100 megabytes. Um, and that's just for optimizing uh, training and machine learning in the TensorFlow pipeline. So using the tool, we were able to quickly put together this video of wildfires in California. As of now, our Gibbs downloader tool is limited to one MODIS product, MODIS Terra Cor Corrected Reflectance True Color. However, we look to expand the tool to include more products for further customizability. Additionally, we have been working with the team members of NASA Impact to test and gather user input at all times in order to constantly be improving our tool. For users interested in MODIS data and natural phenom phenomena, we have made fast and easy pipelines allowing users to acquire data. For natural phenomena such as hurricanes, we are working on packaging these images as TensorFlow datasets for near instantaneous access and two lines of code. For people interested in personalized data, we developed a command line tool that takes multiple parameters and returns MODIS satellite image data in whatever format they desire. And finally, for those new to the field of machine learning and unfamiliar with TensorFlow datasets, we will be looking to publish hands-on videos and tutorials and collab notebooks so that anyone can begin training their own machine learning models with our prepackaged TensorFlow datasets and Gibbs downloader. Our work eliminates the esoteric terms and complicated guidelines which deter ordinary citizen scientists from engaging in the world of remote sensing and machine learning. Thus, we are able to reduce the barriers to entry through open source software, which opens earth science to the public. Thank you very much.